You know, Thursdays marked the Cats' fourth loss in, to a double-digit seed since really seeding began the NCAA tournament in 1979. And two of those have come in the last three tournaments for Coach Cal and the Wildcats. You know, Kentucky is one and four in its last five NCAA tournament games. It's tied for its worst five game stretch in the tournament in program history. So let's bring in Jay Billis. And Jay, give me your biggest takeaway from Kentucky's really shocking departure from the tournament. Yeah, well, it was shocking. It was surprising. Shocking, I don't know, because Oakland is a very good team. You know, they've got more than Jack Golke, who Jack Golke has made now after that game 131 threes on the year. He's four of eight from two. He's only made four twos on the year. So you know going into the game exactly where you have to guard him. And Kentucky didn't dedicate a defender to him that wouldn't help off on anyone else. And they wound up giving up 10 to Golke, and they gave up 15 overall. You give up 15 threes to anybody, you're putting yourself in a position to lose. And combine that with Kentucky was facing a zone defense that matched up and, and was very difficult to play against that, that Oakland runs. And they run it every game. Uh, and it looked like a Rubik's Cube in the dark to Kentucky in order to solve. So that usually leads to putting yourself in a position where you can get beat in a game. And you got to give Oakland a, a ton of credit. But Kentucky, if they played a seven-game series, Kentucky wins the series. But you know, we all know the NCAA tournament is not a seven-game series. You know, you slip on a banana peel, you're out. Yeah, you're right about that. Golke with 10 threes last night. So what is another first round loss mean for Kentucky and Coach Cal's future. I've called a number of Kentucky games. I know you have this season. The Commonwealth certainly is not happy. Coach Cal said this is one of his most talented teams. They didn't win a single SEC tournament game, nor now an NCAA tournament game this season. Yeah, I mean, he's going to have to listen to it. That's part of the deal when you're the head coach of Kentucky is they're a very vocal fan base. They know the game uh, and they expect to win. And when you fall short of that, uh, but Cal's done it some different ways recently. Like I, I, I understand what he said in the postgame press conference, but first of all, there's no team out there whose average age is 24, 25. You may have some 24, 25 year olds on the team, but your average age is not that. And their average age isn't 19. Uh, but he, he went older a few years ago and tried to essentially to get ahead of the transfer portal, get, get older, and they lost to St. Peter's. So this is, about, this is about being prepared to play. It's not about simply your age. And there, he's not going anywhere because he's got. they'd have to buy him out at $33 million. He's got a lifetime contract. So he's not going anywhere. Yeah, you're right about that. Um, meanwhile, let's take a, uh, another blue blood. Boy, they came close to getting upset last night. Kansas held on against Sanford thanks to this foul called on A.J. Stanton McCray when he attempted to block a dunk there by Kansas guard Nick Timberlake. Now, Sanford could have potentially gotten the ball back with, what, what un down one under 14 seconds to go. Instead, the Jayhawks extended the lead. They, of course, went on to win that game 93-89. Give, give me your reaction to the call, though, first. Just unfortunate. Uh, the officials were trailing the play. It was in transition. Uh, Sanford presses and uh, Kansas threw long. It was just one of those things where the officials missed it. Uh, in the grand scheme of things, it's not that big of a deal. Officials are going to miss calls. But I think, I think there are a lot of people out there that maybe don't watch a ton of basketball, maybe don't, don't understand the replay rules. You can't replay that. Uh, you can't consult replay on it because it's, uh, it's a judgment call. Uh, in the game. Otherwise, we'd be at replay every five seconds. We are there now anyway, but you can replay an out-of-bounds call in the last two minutes of regulation or overtime, and there are a couple other things, but you can't, you can't go, uh, consult replay uh, for a judgment call like that. So just really unfortunate for Sanford. You, do you think that's something that they will look at and change going forward? I hope not. Um, we spend way too much time looking at the officials' backsides uh, while they consult replay now. This is not football where there are committee meetings be between each, each play. Uh, it would, it's really disruptive now, especially toward the end of games, 
uh, you start adding things like this. I mean, we, we had a similar play that was a goaltend years ago in the Kentucky LSU game that led us to replay goaltend calls. And that's disruptive. So hopefully they won't they won't overreact to this because replaying a, a block shot would be a severe overreaction. Jay Billis here with us. We'll talk more about the tournament uh, a little bit later in the show. Thank you, Jay. Meanwhile, uh, you know, Kentucky's loss to Oakland, definitely the biggest bracket buster of the day, as about 7.5% of the brackets picked Oakland to pull off the upset. But after Thursday, 1,825 brackets out of over 22 million remain perfect. That is eight thousandths of a percent of all the brackets. And Kentucky went to Thursday's matchup with Oakland as a 13 and a half point favorite, according to ESPN bet. That is the third largest upset of an SEC team in the NCAA tournament since the field expanded in 1985. All right, joining us now is our ESPN basketball analyst, Andrea Carter. All right, Andrea. Um, your biggest takeaway from Oakland's big win over Kentucky last night? The biggest takeaway, Brian, is that teams are not going to win national championships when their roster is based on one-and-done players. It's just not going to happen. In this era, with the transfer portal, Jack Golke was in his sixth season of college basketball. His level of experience is elite. And the thing is about young guys, it's hard to get them to understand the importance of very little things. Jack Golke is coming off the bench. He only started in 15 games. Yes, he lights it up from beyond the three-point line. But for young guys, they were probably like, I'm not worried about this guy coming off the bench. He's not going to hit that many threes. He lit him up for seven in the first half. It takes young guys a while to make adjustments, especially this Kentucky team that struggled with defense all season long. You're not going to win a national championship with one-and-done guys. That's the biggest takeaway. But Coach Cal isn't going anywhere because Kentucky fans show up season after season to watch these superstars come in and then go to the NBA. They averaged 19,900 fans at home this season. It's not just Coach Cal's buyout. It's the fan base. He's not going anywhere. They show up for those games. Yeah. As it stands, undefeated South Carolina, the odds-on favorite to win the national championship. That's according to ESPN Bet. Now, you've got the defending champion LSU Tigers. They boast the third shortest title odds, but the Tigers in that same region as Caitlin Clark and Iowa, meaning we could get a rematch of last year's title game. So with that, what would you think a title mean to Caitlin Clark? Listen, people are going to give me a hard time for this, and that's fine. But if Caitlin Clark wins the national championship this season, she is the GOAT of college basketball, the greatest of all time. There are multiple reasons why. The first one are the records that she's broken on the men's and women's side. Caitlin Clark will be the first player ever, Brian, to lead the country in not just scoring. People want to say she's the greatest scorer of all time, and that's true, but scoring and assists. She's the only player to reach 3,000 points and 1,000 assists. No player has ever done that before. So there are things that she's done that no player on the men's or women's side has ever done. And to me, I know players have won multiple national championships. Brianna Stewart won four. Maya Moore was my favorite player. I had newspaper clippings of her. Every time I see her or I talk to her, I get butterflies because I still get that excited. But Caitlin Clark, if she wins one, she's the GOAT. To win multiple, that's a representation of a program. To win one, that's a representation of a player. If Caitlin wins one, along with the record she has on the men's and women's side and the team she would potentially have to take down to get it, she's the GOAT. All right, so let me talk to you about South Carolina. Their favorite, obviously, you know this, to win it all. Uh, are you taking the Gamecocks or are you taking the field? I've got to go with the Gamecocks. And the reason why is I like to stay consistent with my takes. I picked South Carolina last year to win it all, and they had noticeable disadvantages on the offensive side. They couldn't hit threes. This season they have Tahina Pau Pau, who transferred in, leads the country as far as power five teams go in three-point field goal percentage. They've got size on the inside. South Carolina has four things that no other team has. They have size, they have speed, they have experience, and they have depth. And they also have skill if you want to throw in a fifth team. Some teams might have two or three of those things. Iowa, right, they have skill and they have experience. LSU, they've got size, they don't have depth. 
South Carolina has all five of those things. I'm not picking against them. And you can add a six. How about Don Staley as well? They got a great coach. That's true. <laughs>